schließe dein leibliches Auge, damit du mit dem geistigen Auge zuerst dein Bild siehst. Dann fordere zu Tage, was du im Dunkel gesehen, dass es zurückbirgte auf andere von außen nach innen. Die Kunst tritt als Mittlerin zwischen die Natur und den Menschen. Das Urbild ist der Menge zu groß zu erhaben, um es erfassen zu können. These are two of the most interesting fragments written by German romantic painter Caspar David Friedrich. With them, we understand that his pictorial works are a true treatise on philosophy, that his work is not the result of a mere observation, but is a pictorial construction about the relation of man and nature, the greatness of nature, something that has always haunted Friedrich from childhood. When his brother died, drowned by eyes in front of his helplessness, the smallest of man in front of nature. Friedrich is the niche of painting, the philosopher of romantic painting. But he is also the Goethe of painting, especially in his most iconical work. The Wanderer über the Nibelmeer. Because this work is a monument to the concept of romantic work. The wayfarer that observes the world, walking as a romantic or philosophical exercise that inducts to knowledge. And so the art of travel like Goethe in his Italian writer. Some experts, like Grote, have even wanted to identify Goethe himself in the man with his back in the painting. In fact, it was Ludwig Grote himself who presented the work for the first time in 1950 in a magazine. Then, and since 1939, it was in a private collection. Before it, nothing is known, a work that would not be presented publicly until 1959 in an exhibition in London. And it was not until 1970 that it was bought for the collection of the Kunsthalle in Hamburg where it's today. It measures 94 by 74 centimeters and it's an oil on canvas. Friedrich introduces us in a hazy landscape through a mysterious man from behind who in fact are ourselves, the viewer. It's an autumn landscape in the early hours of the morning when the fox, due to thermal inversion, grow low. It's an evocative, serene landscape that transmits tranquility, chromatically pleasing. They are the typical chromaticism of Al Frederick's walk. Sunsets with the last lights of day, or sunrises with cold tones and the first violet lights of the day. But despite being a peaceful landscape, it's not. The construction of the rocks and the positioning in them of the mysterious walker looking towards the cliff and thus is us to a great feeling of emptiness. A viewer's void that was solved by Friedrich because we are the walker, 
a void of nature, which is the existential void of man in front of her. Fear of the greatness of natural space, like Holderlin's Empedocles, a greatness that, at the same time, is poetic and philosophical, Victoriary creates a unique-like atmosphere and never seen before in painting. Above all, the centrality of the figure that we see from the back within his compositional triangle. A whole landscape, cold and calm in color, but stormy and energetic in the composition of the folk. It should also be noted that the landscape is the fruit of Friedrich's inventive construction. It doesn't respond to a specific place, but puts different places in the same picture. From the sexy Sheshbite, for example, the Kaiser Krone. Nichts ist Nebensache in einem Bilde, alles gehört unumgänglich zu einem Ganzen, darf also nicht vernachlässig werden. Ich never did plan a painting on easel. His works are a romantic construction, like Goethe's Italian Reise. They are manifest of spirit, detailed, studied with consciousness in the intimacy of his studio. On the other hand, it would be impossible to paint life in nature like Friedrich does it, because his brush stroke is accurate, slow and almost invisible. Because Friedrich paints a studied light, not a real one, creating a visual poetry that is the fruit of pictorial imagination. We have lived the wonderful time in which everyone used the word Wanderlust without knowing even its meaning. But everyone was very Wanderlust. If there is a correct icon for this word, it's Caspar David Friedrich. And within his work, without doubt, is the banderer über dem Nebelmeer. But be careful, this banderer was never a banderlust, a banderlust of the hurry journey, disinterested by what he sees and obsessed only with the capitalist collecting of countries visited for great glory of Instagram. In no way, that walker was another. It was that of the slowliness, the observation and the fullness of romantic soul seeking the slow nature. The wanderer here is Friedrich himself and at the same time is the viewer, us. For the first time in art history, the viewer here, the bander, is an inseparable part of the work. He interrogates us. He places us in front of the landscape that Friedrich has created for us. Presents the empty of human landscape, your soul before the unreachable immensity of the world. And we are a walker in the sea of life, of the mist that doesn't allow us to advance. Our own soul that we must overcome. A walker like Friedrich was in his moment which from his works drown great romantic manifests. The wonder über the never mere is the man of enlightenment in front of his desired freedom. The man 
before the doors of modernity.